Today's video is going to be getting a tad controversial and probably a bit heated in the comments down below. So I encourage fans of this channel to basically uh, try to keep an open mind because I know I defend Tesla a lot and I say a lot of things I love about them. And oftentimes I'm accused of being a shill, a fanboy, which I'll, I'll admit, yes, I often give Tesla the benefit of the doubt sometimes when they don't deserve it. But I actually want to address something that I don't quite understand that the company's doing. Maybe I just need a different perspective on it, but I wanted to talk out loud about this subject a bit because it's a hard one for me, okay? I've always been a huge fan of Rivian ever since I knew who they were. When they first unveiled their truck, I thought the gear tunnel was super duper cool. I love their approach on interiors, and I'm super glad that deliveries have finally begun for the R1T, and I'm really excited for the R1S. I think that it's actually a really competitive alternative to the Model X for people who are looking for, you know, electric cars that can sit seven adults fairly comfortably. But as you guys know, I'm also also just a huge Tesla fan. I hope to buy one one day and I'm in love with the software, the charging network, the approach towards autonomy. If you've watched any of my videos, you're probably aware, yes, I'm a huge fan of Tesla. So you can imagine how hard it is and kind of difficult it is to read when you find out that Tesla is suing Rivian for allegedly stealing trade secrets and hiring too many former employees. And apparently these former employees were often encouraged to bring documents and intellectual property. I think at one point there was even talk that company property, like laptops and stuff, were encouraged to be brought over to Rivian. And I feel a little bit torn on this subject because I'm reading through what the lawsuit is allegedly blaming Rivian for, and I do see a lot of genuine honesty whenever Rivian employees or RJ talks about their product. You know, I also think Rivian is doing it smart by going into a different segment of the EV industry than what Tesla has been doing. And even with the Cybertruck, I pretty much feel like Rivian is kind of in a completely different class, right? It's going for more of those adventurous and camping and off-roading market that's going to enjoy having silence in their vehicles as they drive through nature. And Tesla is going for a bigger market, I would say, but it feels very separate from Rivian's, and yet Tesla wants to come after Rivian and basically tell them like, hey, you can't be stealing our stuff and you're poaching our employees and whatnot. Now, I'm not trying to advocate that what Rivian did allegedly, again, we don't know how much of this is being exaggerated or or how much of this is being blown out of proportion and maybe it's just a very small percentage of Rivian's employees, but my hot take on the subject is, does Tesla really need to be messing around with lawsuits right now? I mean, seriously, Tesla has so much on their plate already with trying to navigate the chip shortage, trying to figure out how these 4680 batteries can work, trying very carefully to get their FSD beta software working reliably, trying to ramp up Giga Texas and Giga Berlin simultaneously. They want to expand Fremont and Giga Shanghai. So between all of these crazy different projects. Tesla, are you really that concerned that someone's going to be looking at some of your documents, some of your intellectual property that is being used to, you know, support your mission? The idea is to get as many people over to electric vehicles as possible, and I personally think Rivian directly helps Tesla with their mission of creating more electric vehicle options for people out there, and there's been many times I've heard Elon and Tesla as a whole say, like, we have open patents, and we want anybody to be able to use the tech technology from Battery Day with the 4680s, and I recall watching Battery Day and being proud that Elon went up there and said, we want other automakers to be doing this. We need as many companies as possible ramping up their battery production and getting into making fully electric vehicles so that we have cleaner energy, more efficiency when it comes to transportation. So I hear about that, and on the surface it all sounds great, but then we see that Tesla is in my opinion, kind of wasting money on, like, legal teams that are going on the offense. I know that there's a lot of legal teams coming at Tesla, and it makes sense to have a defensive legal team, but to go after another company because they took some property and some paperwork that's supposed to include key technology for their battery packs. I'm not saying ethically it's the right thing to do. I'm not saying morally it's okay for a company to steal another company's secrets, but with how much Tesla has going on right now, like, should they really be wasting time on trying to slow down another EV startup, which I'm sure is burning through cash. They're probably not going to be profitable for several years, and they're going through production hell right now, trying to ramp up the R1T and get it to all of the people who have reserved one, and you want to kind of kick them while they're down, even if there's, okay, a few Rivian employees, yes, I'm sure, are probably using unethical recruitment tactics, and if there are employees at Rivian that are genuinely contacting Tesla employees and saying, hey, come work for us, and yeah, steal some some of that paperwork that you're definitely not supposed to be taking. Yeah, I'm not trying to say that's a good 
good thing. I get that this is a complicated opinion I'm trying to convey. I understand that's bad, and no, it shouldn't be done, and this lawsuit's already taking place, so if Rivian finds out what their recruiters are saying, and if the recruiters are encouraging, you know, bad practices like this, then fire those recruiters. But let's not try to act like this is the entire fundamental vision of the company of Rivian. A common mindset that I see a lot of people have online towards businesses is that they're singular-minded, right? Like, there's one person in control of the entire company, and if that company does anything wrong, it's solely that one person's vision and it's that one person's opinion that resulted in this outcome, where I really don't think it's that simple. A company is an accumulation of thousands of ideas and thousands of people, which of course are not all going to agree on the same thing. And because companies are run by people, and you know, people are not inherently good or bad. There are good humans on Earth, and I'd like to think most people are good, and then of course there are some bad that use malicious tactics or selfish reasons to benefit themselves. Maybe there's something bad going on within Rivian right now where the recruiters are being told, hey, you need to be able to recruit a certain number of people, and maybe if they don't recruit a certain number of engineers, then they don't get paid as much, or the chances of them getting promotion isn't as high, so that results in them selfishly trying to recruit people using unethical business practices. So again, really trying not to say that it's okay for companies to steal intellectual property. I just think that Tesla's mission statement should be much, much bigger and much higher than thinking, hold on a second, we're trying to develop 4680s. We don't want somebody else to also find a way of developing 4680s and actually start ramping them before us. The thing I admire about Elon Musk that I have not seen any other CEO do before is he openly said in an interview that if another car company came along and started building better electric vehicles than Tesla and they were able to build more of them and Tesla goes bankrupt and they can't stay in business, he said he thought that would be a good thing. He would still be okay with his company dying because someone else made a better product because if that other company existed, that meant that they were accelerating our transition to sustainable energy. Like, no other CEO in the world would ever say that, like, it's a good thing for our competitor to kill us off. But I admired that about Elon. So I'm having a hard time understanding, like, these trade secrets we're talking about. Like, Rivian hired a former executive of the Tesla supercharging team, someone that goes around and installs chargers. And of course, now it's becoming kind of a meme to say that Rivian is copying Tesla because we've seen YouTubers review the Rivian software and it definitely looks very similar to Tesla's OS. And also there's some fine print in their IPO filing that said they want to start offering a $10,000 software package for autonomous driving features. So now I see a lot of comments and people on Twitter saying stuff like, well, Rivian just copies Tesla. They love to copy Tesla. They're such a copycat. In my view, maybe this is just my arrogant tech community perspective, but copying in the tech world is okay because as long as you're copying the good stuff that just means that there's a standard or a new piece of technology that's been discovered by one brand and another brand wants to adopt that too yes i'm a huge fan of the autonomous driving features tesla offers and i love the way they lay out their operating system and how their software works and how the car visualizes all of the pedestrians and cars around it so yeah rivian is kind of copying that in regard and based on the conversations i've heard from the employees it sounds like that's kind of intentional when you're an electric vehicle startup and you need to hire a bunch of software engineers, but also people that work on electric vehicles and powertrains, it's kind of inevitable you're probably going to start hiring some people that worked at Tesla because Tesla was way ahead of the game and they were ramping electric vehicles before everybody else was. And frankly, at the scale they are, they still do beat everyone to the punch when it comes to mass production of EVs. But yeah, it's ridiculous to assume that every single employee Tesla ever hires has to permanently and forever work at that company and they can't work anywhere else. If another EV startup comes along and they want to take electric vehicles in a different direction like Rivian does, trying to make them more about off-roading and camping and being adventurous, not so much being, you know, aerodynamic sedans and crossovers, there's a market for that. Rivian just wants to cater towards a different market with the R1T and the R1S. So yeah, I'm sure hiring a lot of powertrain and vehicle battery experts, you're naturally going to find a lot of people that happen to work at Tesla. And I think copying things like the 4680 or however Tesla was able 
able to rapidly expand their charger network, getting those ideas from former employees and applying them to your brand. Maybe I'm wrong for thinking this way, but I don't really think that's a bad thing because ultimately all electric vehicles, I think should be looking at themselves as on the same page. We all believe there's a better future for transportation. We all want to get off of oil and gasoline and we want to get away from these internal combustion engines. And I wish that Tesla and Rivian could get along more so and not be looking at this as a, hey, because you recruited a few of our employees in an unethical manner, we're going to come after you and sue you because a lawsuit is honestly like one of the last things Rivian needs right now. I'm sure they're burning through a lot of Amazon money and if they don't turn profitable, they might end up getting bought out and then I could sadly see Rivian quickly becoming just the delivery van for Amazon company. I don't want that to be true because I am a genuine fan of the R1T and the R1S. I think they're great vehicles and I think they can comfortably coexist with Tesla. I just don't have this same Tesla bull argument all the time that just like Tesla is the only company that can survive and every other car company has to die off and be killed by Tesla. I think that even when they're manufacturing 20 million vehicles a year, that's probably still going to leave 30 to 40 million vehicles to other brands and I do think everything should be electric in the future. So that's why this channel is not called Talos of Tesla. I wanted to brand it Talos of EV because I do think that the market is bigger than just Tesla. Even if yes, Tesla is the majority of the market and they deserve most of the attention because they accommodate for most of the market. But overall, I really don't think Rivian deserves this kind of punishment for probably the bad behavior of a few employees. And maybe Tesla is just trying to set an example. You know, they feel like, well, if we let it slide with Rivian, then we have to let it slide with more brands. But please help me understand in the comments below, like what exactly does Tesla have intellectually and internally that they're worried about other companies taking from them? I could kind of understand like those Chinese brands stealing self-driving software, but it doesn't sound like Rivian is really doing that. They're mostly just working on, you know, battery technology. And there's concern that how Tesla built their supercharging network, whatever skills and knowledge was built in that process is now being carried over to Rivian's adventure network process. But I still think that's good. Like, I guess I'm just trying to understand what the worst case scenario is if Tesla didn't have to sue Rivian over this. Like, what are they worried about happening? Like, okay, it turns out that Rivian poached a few Tesla employees and they stole some of their battery technology or their charging technology. So then Rivian uses what they learned from the former Tesla employees to make their battery packs better with higher energy density and they make their charging speeds better. They make their software on the center screen better and then they still struggle to mass produce because no amount of IP you get from Tesla is going to help you buy from the right suppliers and find a way to build a mass production process where you can actually scale your vehicles. So end of the day, Tesla could just use this money that I think they're kind of wasting on suing another brand and use that towards more prototyping of 4680 production or getting more factories online or just paying off some more debts, you know, just to kind of secure your company's future. I know I probably don't have the most popular opinion today, but I just think that it's frustrating when you're a big fan of both of these brands and to see them kind of at each other's throats saying, hey, you took our stuff and the other one saying, no, we didn't. It's like, can't you just both stay in your own lanes and focus on actually bringing more of the announced vehicles to market. Like, Tesla's guilty of this, Rivian is guilty of this. Took them way too long to deliver the R1T after months and months of delays. And Tesla, we've been waiting on the Cybertruck, we've been waiting on the Semi and the Roadster and everything we've been waiting on for years at this point. So instead of having everybody get together and point fingers at who stole what and whose idea was this, let's just focus on the product, right? Like, let's just focus on the mission. And Anyway, I hope all of my ramblings today made any tiny bit of sense. I'm not sure if I did, but I also want to remind you guys that just because I'm talking to a camera, that does not give me a figure of authority. I am not an expert on this subject. I am no legal mastermind. Like, I am just as interested as many of you at finding out why Tesla and Rivian are bothering with this whole lawsuit thing, and I'm open to learn. You know, there might be a lot of things you guys correct me on in today's video, and I'll be happy to be proven wrong, figure out exactly what the issue is, and I'm still young, and there's still a lot I don't know, so I'm just trying to remind you guys, I'm open-minded on this subject too, but I'm still having a hard time figuring out what would justify this lawsuit, and in my opinion, make it, like, worth pursuing, because right now, I feel like Tesla really doesn't have the time or need to sue anybody, because they're not even close to having a competitor that actually slumps their demand in any way, shape, or form. Tesla has out-of-control demand as is, so if another EV brand came 
along and started mass producing their vehicles from Tesla secrets or started using the 4680s in their cars. Good for them, because hopefully that will let Tesla catch up on some of these orders instead of having to keep raising all their prices and pushing out deliveries further and further. So anyway, I appreciate all of the people on Patreon that have been helping me save for my next Tesla, which keeps getting more expensive because the competition just ain't good enough. So if the competition has to steal some intellectual property here and there, I mean, don't do it, but... Okay. As long as the product gets better, that's really all I care about. But still, end of the day, thank you all for watching, and hopefully we can have a civil, reasonable discussion about this down below. Have a great day.